All right. Well, welcome to the third day of our Cleveland Teaching Collaborative Summer Sandbox. We're very excited <laughs> to have made it this far, um, but we've had some really interesting workshops and tutorials. And now today we are giving our tutorial on setting up a classroom in Microsoft Teams, which is particularly useful for Cleveland State faculty and instructors because Cleveland State is a Microsoft institution, um, but this tutorial can be used at any institution with Teams or other Teams subscriptions. Um, one of the downsides to Teams, of course, is that it costs more for instructors and students if there isn't an institutional subscription. So that's something to keep in mind as opposed to other learning management systems like, um, you know, Google, Google Docs, Google Drive, um, you know, Blackboard, things that are provided by other institutions. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Shelley Rose. I'm an Associate Professor of History at Cleveland State University and a co-leader of the Cleveland Teaching Collaborative. And I'm uh, mostly in charge of teacher education and social studies curriculum at Cleveland State. And so this is an extension of my own experience in remote learning. Um, when we went into emergency remote learning, one of the first things I turned to was Microsoft Teams. The reason being, and this is the first, um, the first slide, if you speak, if so to speak, in um, in my guide, which I'll put in the chat right now before I forget, um, why Microsoft Teams. The reason I chose Microsoft Teams is one, all of my students were already integrated into Cleveland State systems, and when I surveyed them before we went to remote learning, they indicated that they wanted to stay with Teams. So I was using it in my class already in particular survey courses and also my upper level seminar type courses. Um, and so we transitioned with teams and just gave it a bigger role in our class. Um, the other thing is I wanted to keep platform numbers down. I didn't want students working across you know, six different technologies trying to transition into this emergency moment. And so I figured out how to integrate that all into one place, which turned out to be Microsoft Teams. Um, it's not a perfect solution, but you'll see how it can be a good solution for some of us. So why Teams? For us, again, at CSU, it's an easy, easy lift. Um, if you're not going to use Blackboard, Teams is another option. I like it because the discussion board is more interactive. I like it um, because student feedback is that um, the app on the phones, mobile app, is actually more responsive than Blackboard. That has been the candid feedback from students. And so that's another reason that I chose this particular format. And one thing that I think is important is I was using Teams in an in-person class before it was a remote method for me. And so when we go to whatever comes next, <laughs> um, I envision using Teams still, and I'll tell you a little bit why. But first, since this is a tutorial, logging on to Teams, here are the steps. If you're at CSU, you can go to My CSU, um, which is on our homepage. Go to your webmail, and in the, the background, you'll see, and I should have pulled this up, but I'll give you a screenshot. Let's see. Um, so you'll go to check my email. So you want to go to your webmail. Engage 365 is the whole suite of Microsoft apps. And when you log in, I'll just show you very quickly. Up here, there's this thing called the waffle. And that is where you get the whole menu for all of the Microsoft apps that we, whoops, Teams isn't happy. Um, there we go for that are available at CSU. When you click on all apps, you get even an expansion of that, which is pretty amazing. Um, and so just to show you what it looks like, when you click on Office 365, you can see at CSU, we have all of these different apps that we can choose from. And Teams is one of them. So if you click on Teams, it takes you usually first to the web version. And I'm hoping it gives me the error. Nope, there we go. Yeah, it, it said we've run into an issue because I have the app installed on my computer and now it's trying to send me to my app. So I'm going to tell it to stop essentially because it's gonna be angry and we'll go back. We'll just do this.
and we'll go back to the guide. The reason the guide's on my personal website right now is because this is my personal filing cabinet. <laughs> it's my digital filing cabinet cabinet for anything I need to link out to. Um, and so if we scroll back down, that's the basic CSU method to access Teams. Um, for non-CSU users, you can go directly to teams.microsoft.com. Um, and if your institution has a Teams subscription or Engage, three, sorry, it's not called Engage 365 everywhere, it's Microsoft 365's Office 365, you can click on it and it will take you to your login page when you put in your email address. So now for the basic classroom setup, you can follow along on the Word, WordPress guide. I'm going to now switch to Teams, which this is what Teams looks like in the app. You can see there are a menu of any Teams that you are a member of. And you can see I have actually many Teams, probably too many, but I've hidden most of them so you can see the core. Um, this le far left menu, this activity bar shows activity. If people like your post, if someone tags you in a post, you'll see it here. The calendar at CSU and in any um, institution with Office 365 is usually integrated with your Outlook calendar. So it shows anything that you've scheduled in Outlook, anything that you've scheduled in Teams. Calls is kind of interesting. This is a place where I conduct a lot of my office visits, advising and things like that, because you can see there's a lot of, um, you can connect with anyone at your institution and you can see that your call history, you can see that your contacts, which is basically an address book like for, um, for CSU. Files is linked to SharePoint, um, which is basically the same as OneDrive. And at Cleveland State and in other subscriptions, we have a, um, a terabyte of storage. And so this is where any files you put on Teams, it's by default added to your OneDrive account um, that's connected to your Teams account. Here, you get the Teams menu again. And this last button, Task by Planner, I really hope will work better someday, um, but right now it's supposed to load your tasks, but at the moment it's still a little clunky as you can see, it keeps trying. Um, if you wanna use Tasks by Planner, you can go to tasks.microsoft.com and that will take you um, to the actual app in, your, in the Office 365 suite. So that said, we're going to set up a team. The first thing, is to look down here in your, this, this is of course the Teams app on the website. Sometimes browsers put it at the top, but join or create a team. And there are a couple different um, options. Here at CSU, if there are public teams, they show up and you can join the team because they've been set as anyone can join. Um, there are also teams that you can join with a code. So if a team is limited to certain constituents or certain audiences, like students, um, like a campus activities board, for example, if they had a team, they could send the code out to the students so that only those students with the code could join the team, which is actually what I do. Why students like to keep Blackboard, it's like a comfy blanket, I think. Um, so they like to keep some blank Blackboard integration. I put the code for my team on Blackboard because I'm trying to meet them where they are. If they log in, they don't know anything about me as an instructor, they log into Blackboard, they see the announcement, hey, we're gonna use Teams. Here's the link to the team, here's the code. Easy peasy, right? They can get right in. Um, but for us, we're creating a brand new team. So we'll click on create a team and then you get these options. For all courses, I would recommend choosing class. And the reason being, um, the class team template allows for students to have private spaces with the instructor. So for assignments, for all kinds of um, FERPA reasons, um, for advising, for that kind of stuff, you wanna make sure that students have that kind of private one-on-one -on -one space with you. It's as if they were handing their assignment or a note to you in class, right? Um, so that replicates that. All instructors will have access to all parts of the team. All the students will only have access to the student parts of the team and it's already built in. Um, for other things, professional learning communities are a good choice. They have a lot of the same integration without the divide between users, between teachers and students. So everybody has access to almost everything. 
And then for staff, I've actually not used this one too much, um, but what it does is it enables some of the features like, um, you know, tracking hours, paycheck or time card approvals, stuff like that. And then finally, other is just what it sounds like. It's it's what it's the default Teams template from when they first developed it. It was a very open template. Anybody could access things. You had to customize it a lot more if you wanted it to be more of a class. So we're going to click on class. And for us, we're going to call this CTC Sandbox class. And you can add a description. What I find is nobody reads it and it doesn't show up very many places, so it's up to you. Um, and also you can, this is a new feature and this is awesome. If you have a team that you created, like Kalita took a class with me last spring. Um, if I teach that class again and I want to pull in the channels and pull in some of the basic settings, like you would when you copy a Blackboard shell, it would be, you could do that in Teams as well. You could pull in the existing channels already and save yourself some building time, which is a really good feature. But we're gonna start from scratch, so we'll click next. And yeah, students have a terabyte, Well, I know. Um, so we're gonna add students, which you can do now or you can do later. When I'm building, normally I don't add the students <laughs> because they get all kinds of notifications like, you know, Dr. Rose added this, Dr. Rose put her syllabus up. Oops, she put up another copy of the syllabus because she had to correct it. So usually I wait <laughs> and add them later, but we'll add you now. And you can see it auto-populates the people who are at the institution. Um, so we'll add, so that we have students for teachers. This is where I would put any graduate assistants, any other instructors who would need access to the course. Um, a few semesters ago, one of my colleagues um, did a peer review of my team's course. And so this is where I gave her access, right? So she could see what I saw. Um, yay, and we'll get a notification. See, so you start getting all kinds of crazy notifications. Sorry about that. That's why I wait and add the students when everything is almost done. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Mamadou, if you want, I can add you as a teacher so you can see the teacher view. You can give me a thumbs up or thumbs down doesn't. All right, I'll add you and then you can see, there you are, add you, and then you can kind of follow along in the test class. So once you create the team, you get this screen. Um, you can upload class materials. You can set up the class notebook. Um, what this means is class materials is actually a read only file folder that's in the new class template. It's located up here under files in the general channel. Hold on, it's a new team. The files will come. Um, we'll go back and I'll show you. Um, but yeah, if you upload the class materials, let's try doing it this way. It creates a read only folder. This is where I put the syllabus now. Um, this is where I put anything I don't want the students to touch. <laughs> Um, and accidentally edit because that happens more time than you would think. Um, and you'll see if you click on it, it says this is read only class files. Um, teachers can edit, but students cannot. Um, and so, yeah, this is where I drag the syllabus. Uh, you can just drag and drop files. I'm gonna pull a file. I have a folder set up with some things we can throw in here. So I have, hmm. Um, yeah, let me grab a syllabus to throw in. So, so you can, this is a PDF, drag it in, um, and it's uploading up here and it appears here. So if it's in this folder, anyone who has access to the team has access to this folder students and teachers alike. If you need to give additional access, these three dots always open up another menu and you can open it in SharePoint, you can do other things, you can um, copy the link and send it to someone, you can rename it. Sometimes like I pull something in and it says revision one and I don't want it to say revision one, right? I want it to say just the syllabus. You can rename that and just do, here's the syllabus for the course. And then it's there. What I like to do with the syllabus as well is this team, once you create it, they always have in the template a general channel. This is the landing page for the team. 
And so what I like to do is add, go to this plus side sign and add a tab. And find the one that says PDF. And if you can't, you can search, whoops, and click on it. And it'll say, hey, where do you wanna get this PDF, class materials, my syllabus, and save. And it added here, it added the syllabus as a tab. We probably don't want it to say PDF. So if you click the down arrow, you can rename it, syllabus, save. And now when students come to the general channel, if they don't know to go look in the files, they can actually see, oh, here's the syllabus, it's right here, right? And then it's embedded in the team and they can scroll and it's clickable, um, all these things, right? These links all work. So that's one of the first basic things when we do this setup. I'm gonna go back to the general page. Um, one thing I also do is, add a thumbnail to my teams. Um, and this is, I've, I've actually, I study protest movements and I've been studying communication theory. And one of the things that communications um, experts say is that across digital platforms and across all of your medium of communication, you want to have consistency. And so for my teaching, I've kind of brought that in. And up here, you can see this just says CS now, it's just a random, couple of letters. But one of the things that I like to do is customize the thumbnail. So you can do that by clicking over here if you want to edit the whole team and edit the team. You can also do it in the team itself up here. Anywhere you see these three dots, you can usually get um, get a menu for whatever the dots are embedded in. Um, but you want to edit the team and you can choose, so if you're teaching a certain grade level, they actually have some canned images. So if we say we're post-secondary and this, usually I teach a history course, of course there's never any history, so we'll call it social science. Let's see what that gives us. So there we go. We have some columns, some internet, um, some documents. And so we could do the document or, and you can update it and you can see, it updates in the theme up here. Or you can see for some of my other teams, I do custom. And that's because I like to use the same image across things, across platforms. So if this is my geography course, for example, um, and you can see that this thumbnail, I just had it. Um, Anyways, it matches what's on Blackboard and it matches what is here in my, in my ebook. So when students are on my platforms, as long, especially if they have multiple classes with me because social studies majors sometimes have two or three classes with me a semester, which I can't imagine how, how that feels for them. But anyways, um, they can keep their platform straight. Oh, this is the ebook that goes with geography. I'm on the team for geography. It's easy to see. Um, the other thing I do at CSU is I make sure that my teams have a common label. Um, and so for me, that's CSU, the prefix to the course and the number, and then the semester, because now I've done multiple teams for multiple semesters. Um, so I've created this one last night as sort of a test. This is the class I'm teaching in the fall. It's CSU HIS 455 fall 21 is how I named it. It's also the thing that I put on Blackboard. It's everywhere, right? It's also the hashtag I use on Twitter. So again, consistency across platforms. Um, coming back to our test class, the class notebook is actually up here in a tab as well. The class notebook, every class team comes integrated with OneNote, which is another feature of Office 365 or at CSU Engage 365. Um, this will take a while to do in a demonstration, which I can do if you're interested in, um, but eventually it gets set up here in this tab. It might still try to do it, but it gives students a private space to collaborate. And I set it up last night here so that you can see what it looks like. Um, it's OneNote embedded in Teams, which you can open. If you go up here, you can actually open OneNote in OneNote. 
um, open in the browser or open in the OneNote app. Sometimes it works better, um, but it gives you a welcome page and you can see I can edit this once I'm, once I'm in here. So I can read it, I can leave what I want, I can take add what I need for the students. But the most important thing is if you click on this bookshelf, it shows the navigation. And I should have added my students here, but there's the welcome, there's collaboration space, which is space where anyone can edit. There's content library, so you can put articles or things in there. Um, there's teacher only, which is for anyone who's registered as a teacher in the team. And then down here, there would be individual notebooks with the students' names on them. And it would only show you and the student their notebook. So this actually works well. We have an advising center um, for the history department. The advising center is in a team, a classroom team because we have individual file folders for every student. And we wanted that feature of OneNote. Um, I'm gonna be honest and say, I don't use OneNote a whole lot while I'm teaching anymore. And the reason is Teams basically replicates it. Um, for a while, OneNote was the most powerful tool Microsoft had for teaching. Um, and then as you know, Teams kind of caught up, it, I feel like OneNote is less important, but there's still a lot of instructors who use OneNote with their students um, for various things. So it's worth exploring. Um, the other way, things that you can sign up um, or set up, excuse me, these are all the default tabs. Assignments is a default tab in Teams, so it will always be there. You don't have to use it, but you can. Um, and you can post your assignments here. And you'll see if students turn them in, they would be here. Um, for me, I put in my My5 exercise, which you can, um, which you can see because I'm going to add it to the test team. Um, and what that is, <laughs> um, what that is, I'll convert you all yet. Um, what that does is basically the My5 intro gets students to introduce themselves. So it creates community, but it also gets them to use teams in a low stakes <laughs> assignment. Um, so that's why I do that. And so we'll get started, we'll add an assignment. Uh, I will pull in the My5. So you can categorize your assignments if you wanted to. Um, right now it's a blank slate. So we wanna create, you can create a quiz, which is based in Microsoft Forms. You can have an existing assignment, pull it from another team that you had or create an actual assignment, which we will do. And so it'll be my five intro assignment. And then you would enter the instructions if you wanted to, five points you're going to assign it to the whole class, but if you had multiple classes, you could assign it to multiple. Super useful, this is a new thing. Um, we'll give you a little time. And then what you can do as well is you can add resources and you can add the instructions. Um, let me see, maybe I can pull it from this one. No, not the My5 anyways. Um, so I'll just add it from my OneDrive or upload. That might be the easiest. Demo, my five. And then once you have it on the team, it's in your OneDrive as well. And so the students can't edit it. It will always tell you, um, but they can look at this and they can see what the exercise is. They can get all the instructions. Um, you can see I, I wrote them out pretty explicitly. Um, this was very much in the beginning of remote learning, but I think this is still a good thing to have for students. Um, and this actually, the original assignment was in Flipgrid, um, but when I did it, Flipgrid was not integrated into Teams. You can integrate it now. Um, and students were lost. They were like, you're sending me to a new platform? No way. So I made the instructions for Microsoft Stream which is embedded in the team. And I'll just show you where. And I'm gonna wrap up in a minute because I don't wanna take too much time um, and see if you have any questions. Um, but if we look, for example, at this team, here's the My5. If a student wanted to reply, you can click reply. And stream is one of the, 
built-in options. Stream is the video platform for Teams. And so if you click Stream, it'll say, insert a link from Microsoft Stream. Um, and you can create a video that way. Another way students can do some, create a video, they can go to Meet Now. And if you click this, it opens a meeting in the channel. And we'll just see what happens if it takes my camera away from Zoom or not. Um, but you can see, I didn't invite anyone to join me, but I can turn my video on. I can start my own recording. Yeah, it won't let me because I'm on Zoom, but you can start the recording and they can give their introduction to Teams. And then when they're done and they leave, it saves it right here in Teams. It shows me that somebody had a meeting and then if they said it, it will share the, the recording with the stream, with the conversation as well. So finally, I will just show you one of the reasons I really enjoy Teams is the channels, which are over here. Um, one thing I do regularly is I have an at a glance channel and it's named on purpose. Teams hasn't, hasn't changed their setting, but the channels are always alphabetical. So if you want something at the top, it's gotta have, it's gotta be alphabetically at the top. So that's why I have at a glance. It used to be weak at a glance and no one could find it. Um, so we add the at a glance and this basically is this week, you have this assignment due. Um, but one of the things that I do for discussion, I think I put it in here, hmm. maybe not. I'll just show you in here. I put an example of our discussion and that is here. So in the conversation, in the actual channel, this is how I lead discussions. In Teams, I have a Word document in the files of the channel with all of the questions. So barring any confusion, students can download that early even, answer the questions while they read, and then come to discussion. Um, but I post, all right, this is module one, it's class two, here's question one. And then they all reply. And they can like each other's replies, they can put different emojis, they get excited, they put GIFs up, um, they can put links. And this is actually easily searchable now in Teams. If I click on a student, I can see if they've participated, even if things get busy. And so this is how I lead discussion every day. Um, and during remote learning, what I did is synchronous, asynchronous blend. I met my students in the class and at the appointed time on the schedule, but they weren't required to be there. So I would get maybe a third of the students come and they would answer the questions live and then everybody else would answer them asynchronously, but they still were commenting on each other's posts and you know, interacting. So it, it worked out. Um, so that's one thing to think about. I'm just gonna scoot through some of these. You can see I put directions for adding apps. Um, you can add things to Teams, and there's a huge library now at CSU for adding apps. Flipgrid is something you can integrate as a tab into Teams, Nearpod, Miro, Pear Deck. Um, there's a whole bunch now. Um, I stopped using Flipgrid integration, partly because the students complained about it. I really love Flipgrid, <laughs> um, and I think for the right class and the right assignment, it works well, but for what I was doing, they thought it was kind of another hoop to jump through, so I took it out for now. Um, and also if you do assignments, there's a grade book you can use. And just to wrap up, um, for individual meetings with students, the key is we would meet here in the chat, which is individual chats. Um, there's no way for me to mask my chat in a video of Teams, so I'm not gonna click on it, um, but that's a place where you can talk to students individually. And you can do video chat or written chat or just a phone call with them, which is really useful, especially when you're working from home. And we also use Teams. I mentioned the advising center. I use it for my remote office. So this is what my remote office space looks like. And in the guide that I shared the link to, I actually shared, there's a PowerPoint that I put in that office on how to use Teams and how to access me in my office. Um, and then our history tutors, our research center graduate assistants actually started a team for history help for office hours. 
Um, and that works really well too for Teams uses. So things to think about, um, if you're interested in more in Teams and you're at CSU, we have a test classroom that we created for Teams, um, which is just a space, again, with emergency remote learning, we threw up this team and made people teachers and students. And I had a really um, accommodating GA that semester and she was nice enough to let me add her as a student. And so she would screenshot things for us so we knew what the students were seeing. And that's just a, a sandbox space um, to try out assignments, to get feedback from other instructors um, and things like that. So something to think about. I'll stop now. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them. This is awesome. Um, I do have a quick question. Um, sure. With regards to the section when you were posting a new assignment, um, I'm just thinking about the accessibility from a student standpoint. And you mentioned how students, if I heard it correctly, were not able to edit a particular document. And it mm -hmm. seems like it's a similar feature as, I guess, Google Suite when you're trying to post on there. You kind of pick the option to either have students make, an, make a copy for each of the student or not have a copy. So then they would have to like externally download and then edit and then submit. Mm -hmm. um, is there a way to make it either, I guess, everyone able to edit it is or do they all have to have like their own downloaded version and then edit that and then submit i'm just curious no it's a good question um i stopped sharing my screen but let me put it back up real quick um so what's neat about the fact that teams is integrated in with onedrive is that when you go to files so here's my my five in the classroom i created last night for everyone to look at if you go to the my files in class materials, this is read only. And here's the exercise and it won't let a student edit it, right? Because lots of times if you leave it, students will fill it out and all the other students will have all the answers. So you have to be a little careful, um, but it's fairly easy too to make a copy. So you can copy and then go up one and I don't know if we wanted to put it in the project lab, right? You can copy it here and then go to that channel. The students would have access to the file and they could, they can edit it, they can download it, they can do anything to this Word file. Um, and the same thing, so in this class, I do a, a metadata entry assignment. And so here's the Word file. I want them to, I do want them to make a copy, download it and use it. Um, sometimes what my students will do the one thing that I didn't talk about is we'll have private groups for group work. I call them learning groups, which is as good a name as any, I guess. Um, but in here, because it's locked, I can put three students in this room and I can put a copy of that file here in their file and they can edit their own file and only they see it. Does that make sense? So there's, there's different ways around depending on what you wanna do. Um, and this is also why a lot of instructors like to use OneNote because OneNote already has this already built in. You can hand out, send a handout to OneNote and all the students get it and they can edit it in their notebook and it's just their notebook. Um, so it's just kind of depends on your, your plan really. Um, but that's, that's generally what I do. Um, you can also in the assignments set it so that they can edit it. And that's another space where they can, they can edit their actual assignment. Did that answer your question, Will? Yeah, yeah, totally did. It makes a lot more sense So Thank you. Yeah, no problem. It's, um, there's, you know, there's so many ways to do it. I actually went and watched um, Marcus Schultz Bergen gave a nice um, tutorial, <laughs> one note for the win, yeah. <laughs> um, the College of Science loves OneNote, um, and I think that's great. Um, but yeah, I went back and watched Marcus's um, tutorial on Teams, and he does his team looks different than mine, and it should, right? Everybody's Blackboard shell looks different, um, and Google Classroom looks different, but the same basic components are the same, if that makes sense. Yeah, Shelly, this uh, applies uh, to my class. You can see I am working with, uh, uh, in my class, I have, the regular class is 80 students. So uh, for the summer, it is this time, it is 24. Mm -hmm. uh, I divide them into groups to write a paper 
of 12 page so this it seems that this applies to what i am doing because uh, it's a lot of uh, exchange between students and a lot of stand between students and myself uh, so mm. this seems to apply to what uh, i uh, i am doing mm -hmm. uh, uh, i think uh, the 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 tutorial will be really helpful and what you you know the demonstration you made uh, will help me see how I can apply it now. Yes. Awesome. No, I'm so glad. And for those kind of assignments for collaborative writing in particular, that's where I find the private channels work really well with the learning groups because, well, I call them learning groups, but you can put specific students in there and they don't see the, you know, no, one, no other students get in that group. And what I found, at least in remote learning, is that the students were very supportive of each other, right, in those groups. And so they wrote together, but they were also, you know, hey, I can't get to this tonight because I have to go bring my, you know, bring my daughter to her babysitter. Can you do it? And they were very collaborative and very, you know, real life understanding, right, that I was very proud of them because it really brought out the best in a lot of the groups and they wrote better I think because they were so um they weren't afraid to say what they needed to say because it wasn't 50 students in the space right it was five or three but, um, you know, because it is asynchronous uh, I do not expect them to work together because I, I they may they may it's mm -hmm. on their own they decide what to do how they do it so mm -hmm. I think uh, this also would help them if they want to collaborate. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Work together. Yeah, I did it both ways. The first project, um, I tried and made them do the group work together. They wrote a document based question together um, and it went OK. Some groups did awesome and just like normal group work and some groups really fell flat. And so in the next project, I said they could do them individually if they chose, but left them in their learning groups. And that also worked really well, right? They they would send outlines to each other, even though they weren't working on the same project. And so that's an option too, right? Especially in asynchronous, it was it was kind of nice for them to know they had like a partner, <laughs> um, but that there wasn't the pressure of making sure that partner did the work. <laughs> um, and so I think it works in a lot of different ways. So I'm excited to hear how it goes. You'll have to let me know. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, and I see we had some people come in at 930 and I sort of just kept talking. So if you have any questions or you want me to go back, I can go over the basic setup. Um, it takes about maybe 10 minutes if that's something that interests you, or I can even go into some of the deeper features if you have questions. And I'm missing some in the chat, sorry. I just thought uh, in keeping with this was an amazing session. So I just wanted to acknowledge the closure of that session, Shelly. It was really useful. As I said, I started a team site last year and I kind of chickened out. So I'm feeling much more prepared. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. So thank you. Shelley. Yeah, no problem. Shelly, how um, I, I, I almost thought about teams a couple of times and so far i chickened out um not because i'm afraid of the technology myself but because i see the students they all know zoom they all mm -hmm. know um so smashing a new technology in their faces mm -hmm. um, which new opportunities to make mistakes and especially something as broad and as complex as teams Mm -hmm. uh, so how did they how did they respond? So it it was a mixed response. I mean, I've been using Teams since we did the remote learning. Um, actually, I mean, John John knows we've been using Teams in my classes. John has helped me for three or four years now because I first integrated it into big classes, um, big in person classes where I needed to have participation from students but didn't have literally the classroom time. Um, and so the students did some out of the classroom, you know, multimodal participation in uh, reacting to the past curriculum, which I could talk about if anybody has questions. Um, but that's where we started. And so it, when we went to remote learning, it was interesting ties because I had some students who had done that with me in my survey course. And so when students were, they, they were very candid in the team 
you know, this is scary. You know, it's not, I don't think it's going to work. This isn't Zoom. Why are you doing this to me, Dr. Rose? And a lot of students stepped up and said, no, hang with it for a week because I think this is going to be better. And I I thought that was interesting that they, they had had a good experience with teams and they were willing to kind of support each other. I still had a lot of complaints ties. I mean, my evals, there were some people who were just like, why can't you just be like everybody else? Um, <laughs> and so, and, and I, I appreciate that. Um, but I do think that, and this is, so one of my classes was in Google Docs and Google Drive and Google Apps, because I try to teach my social studies teachers Google in person classes, because they use it when they graduate. Um, I made the choice to rip that class from Google and put it in Microsoft when we went to emergency remote learning. And the reason was Teams is integrated with our, our Active Directory, right? With all of our students, all of our PeopleSoft, everything at CSU is tied into Office. And so it actually wasn't too bad because they can just go to their webmail and get there. It wasn't like I was asking them to go out to you know, a totally different platform um, and try to have a totally different log on. Um, I also chose it because I know our Center for Instructional Technology has support for it. Um, they don't necessarily have support for Google. I mean, some of them know Google, but you know, when my students need support and I can't give it to them, I need to know that somebody might be able to. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was interesting. The other thing I will say, we did a survey in our college of students on their learning experiences. And while Teams didn't have as many students who used it, um, Zoom had far more students. The satisfaction was still on the positive side with Teams. So I think less students were exposed, but the ones who were exposed appreciated Teams. And so I'm not sure what to do with all this data yet, but I think that it points to Teams is okay. <laughs> in terms of a learning curve. It's not any worse than other things. And like Kalito was in my seminar class, for my seminars, I think we're always gonna stay in Teams um, because the discussion that it fostered and the way that the students are able to interact with each other and me, I think that's something that I wanna keep. Um, it's not something that I got from Blackboard when I used it for discussion. Um, I'm not digging on Blackboard, but <laughs> for me as an educator, I think Teams works more smoothly. Um, and I also, the other thing that I did ties in response to my first set of evals, the really scary ones from this transition was I started making five and 10 minute snippets and guides. So the first day of class, they now get a guide. I walk them into Blackboard. I show them where all the team stuff is. We walk into teams and I give a little tour of teams. Um, and that seems to make things go better too. So I don't know. I, I think... I think it looks a little scary, but once you get in there and if the guidance is there, um, it doesn't have to be as steep of a learning curve. Okay. But I also don't work for Microsoft or have any invested interest in us using, <laughs> just to put that um, out there. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, um, I would like for us all to uh, go all in on, on Teams or on, you know, let's all do Microsoft, let's all do the same a uh, comprehensive, well-integrated set of tools. But uh, here we are, we don't. Um, mm -hmm. And see also the vast set of tools that were, that has been coming through here also, including Google, including Miro, including Jamboard, including whatnot. Uh, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, being just saying, okay, we're all doing all our Zoom-like stuff, all our live lectures, we're doing them all on Teams and be done, you know, deal with mm -hmm. it um, would probably help. But uh, yeah, so mostly wondering how, how people were complaining about that. And then, uh, yeah, that actually reminds me that one thing that students did enjoy about Teams um, compared to Zoom is when Teams, when the meeting is done in Teams, oh, yeah. the chat stays in the channel. And so if they miss the meeting for any reason, they can go back to it. And if I record it, the recording is all there with the chat in the channel. Like if it was a project and it's in the project lab, it's in that channel. Um, and the same thing with the private groups, they would start their own meetings and record them for their group members. So I don't know, but that's one of the advantages with the chat. That's actually- I also think they'd respond is so much more responsive in the sense of when students have to go to the discussion boards. I put this in the chat earlier, which we can't mm -hmm. see. 
but you have to and then click the actual post. Whereas in Teams, you can see, oh yeah, I love reading Shelley's. Like, let me click on it um, or just see the start of it, which, and you can mm -hmm. get the pings and notifications. Whereas Blackboard, it's a much more clunky notification system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, that's another feature. If they tag me, I have it set that it will email me if it's after my team's hours. <laughs> um, I set quiet hours. And so they know if they need me, like it's an, not an emergency, there are no academic emergencies really, but you know what I mean? Um, if they need an urgent question, they know it catches me at different platforms. Um, and if I can answer, I'll answer. If, you know, if I can't, at least they know I'll see it the first thing when I get in because they've tagged me. Um, and to Molly's point, one of the, the nice things too that they just added, I think, maybe six months ago, you can now click on a user and see all their chats. And so they can catch up with me, but I can also, if I miss something, like it's so busy in my synchronous time that I miss some participation points or something, I can click on them and go, hey, you know, was Will there today? And then I click and I'm like, oh yeah, look at that. He responded seven times, you know, it just got <laughs> lost in the chat. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it's just, I think they all have their pros and cons. They're just, it's, different um, styles and accessibility kind of issues. Um, yeah, but one of the things I like is that it's all in the same place. That's the number one thing for me. Um, I agree, and, that's, a, that's a very key, key um, feature. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, Molly, I didn't even think about that. I don't lecture a whole ton on Teams. Um, in the traditional sense, I put up like 15 minute tutorials or you know a 20 minute explanation of like gender theory or something, right? Um, but yeah, then they can comment and they can all see it too. Um, trying to think if there's anything else you might want to know. I mean, there are advanced features to Teams. Um, when I put this together, I said that we have 15, 20 minutes, I'll just show the basic setup. But if you ever want to know about, you know, integrating stream, you can read my my five exercise. Let me add, I'll add you all to the test team when we're done. <laughs> so you can have those exercises. But um, the my five exercise, like I said, it's ulterior motive is to also get students comfortable with teams. Um, they practice with the stream, they practice posting, they practice commenting on each other's stuff, um, and it's not a high stakes assignment. So one thing I've been thinking about trying to do and haven't come up with a good way of doing so is can I communicate with students through texting because mm -hmm. that's how students that's that's the communicating uh, mode that they have in their pockets uh, while they're doing their homework. Yeah. Meanwhile, I don't want to hand, a, you know, I don't want to have a constantly buzzing phone at two in the morning while they're yeah. doing the homework. So the ideal world, and I've, I've seen plugins uh, for that would be if you can text to, let's say, Teams mm -hmm. and then chat back. Um, do we have any of that available at CSU or is there any kind of somebody that we need to kick so that they can make <laughs> it available? So this is also why the students like the connectivity of it. I think the app, yeah, has instant messaging and, and I have it on my phone. And so I set quiet hours. And at the beginning of the semester, I let my students know I am ready to answer Teams questions from nine to two or nine to four or whatever it is. But after that time, my face has a little Z over it, right? And they know that I might not respond right away. Um, but they, you know, it still comes to my phone. And so it's like text messaging. The one thing we don't have, and John can correct me if I'm wrong, is sometimes um, Teams integration means you can call outside your institution, like on a normal phone number, like yep. Like Skype, but we don't have that as far as I know for faculty at CSU. So my students, they don't have my home phone number or my cell phone number, right? They have my team's information and my remote office link. And when they get to my remote office, they can call me through the chat and it rings on my cell phone through Teams um, or it texts me on my cell phone from Teams, but it doesn't mean that they have like, you know, my personal information, if that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, yeah. 
The, the downside and, of that is that they still need to install an app on their phone, to, yeah. um, which is a small hurdle, hurdle, but still has been known to be a hurdle. Uh, so yeah. in, in the ideal world, SMS would be fantastic. And then I have just a, a use this. Um, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. I, I just put it in the chat too. Elena Andre gave us or uh, wrote a case study for us about using text to communicate with students. Yeah. And some of her suggestions are apps, but one of them is Google Voice. And I know a lot of instructors who used Google Voice as a way to have text still come to their phones and students have like a normal phone number, but not their phone number, <laughs> right? Um, the drawback to that is my cell phone service is Google Fi, and you can't have a voice number attached to your Google Fi because Google Fi uses voice, right? You only, you can't, it's complicated, but for some reason, Google doesn't allow that. So for me, Google Voice isn't an option, um, but it's a good one if, for what you're talking about. I do have a question, um, and I threw it in the chat, but I know... Google Sites is pretty cool with collaboration and stuff. I know it's somewhat unrelated to, I guess, Teams specifically. Is mm -hmm. there a option within Microsoft that allows for kind of somewhat easy website generation? Because I think that'd be cool to be able to still have that mm -hmm. I don't know, ability to create that sort of a thing. Just curious if you know or if there is. Yeah, no, there, so there, I'm going to say, I don't know that it's easy, <laughs> um, but with SharePoint, and again, John can, can correct me because he knows more about this probably, but um, you can have a site associated with your team um, and they all sort of come with a site. Let me see if I can pull ours up. Um, I'll share real quick if I can. Um, but there's a, there's a SharePoint site in every team but there's also I don't know John do you want to save me can we make websites per se or are they just SharePoint sites they're they're SharePoint sites okay. um to the the issue is that in the the OneDrive SharePoint environment there's not it's not a web hosting server mm. uh, specifically so if you make a site that you need to have hosted as a a, a traditional website, um, we don't have we don't have anything that accommodates that. Mm -hmm. um, the yeah. the best you can a a way to fake it is to uh, use one of the other Microsoft tools um, and save as uh, HTML or save as website, um, but that just gives you a, a folder that is a self contained website. It's not mm -hmm. hosted. Yeah, it's all, as far as I know, it's all kind of tied in this. So when I go to the team and then open those documents in SharePoint, um, this is what I get. You can see on the shared screen, this is the, the team I created last night. You can still access a lot of the things from the team over here. It shows the different documents that are in the files and the channel they're in. Um, you can add things like, um, just like little, like almost social media posts sort of, that's what they look like. Um, but this is this is not a website, right? Like Google Sites. I think that um, we can mimic a lot of the things that educators do in Google with Microsoft tools, but they certainly aren't as pretty <laughs> as Google, if that makes sense. Um, and honestly, I would, I would teach in Google all day long if it was something that our students had access to as a site thing, right? the way that we have teams. Um, but I feel like it's it's an extra leap, like we just said, to make them go get a Google login, log into Google. Um, CSU has concerns about student privacy when we use Google because we don't have the licenses um, as I know of. So, you know, and Microsoft is something that we've licensed with. So it's an option, uh, it's 10.02. So unless there's another um, pressing question, I'll, I'll probably wrap up now, but thank you all for coming and listening to to my um, tutorial about Teams. <laughs>